Thank you, thank you, Booker Tov, everybody. Good morning. Thank you to Pastor Young Hun Lee, to Am Graham Lee, wherever you are out there, to our distinguished minister Zev Elkin, who has left. But in any case, thank you to him, um, to our many distinguished colleagues from the Knesset and other government positions, Kentucky Governor uh, Matt Bevin, um, Estonian Justice Minister Erman Lenblau, um, to all of the founders of the Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast, particularly to. Our, our friends Josh, Renee, in Christians, Allies for Israel. Got that right? Allied for Israel. I'm going to get that day before we finish this day. Uh, and above all, to my, my, my inspiration and leader, Robert Elitoff from the Knesset, who's done so much to make this happen. We are all deeply indebted to him. I, you know, Michelle, you know I'm a believer, right? You can say that. I know that everything happens for a purpose in my life, in our lives. We don't always know the reason, right? I don't know why, why it has been my fate and destiny to always have to speak after you. <laughs> I'm sure there's a reason. <laughs> if anybody's got it, I'd like to hear it. But would any of you like to speak after her? <laughs> Not easy. So it is, it is an, a, a peculiar aspect of Israeli political culture. According to all of our polls, some 80% of Israelis are observant and traditional in some way. We are a remarkably observant society, competing relative to other industrialized societies in the world. Only the United States rivals Israel in terms of our, our observance and our faith and commitment. But in marked contrast to so many countries, particularly the United States, as you know, we don't talk about it. You very rarely have an Israeli politician get up and talk about his personal connection with God, uh, the way she or he prays to God. It's something that in this country is more or less not done. So when I get up here and do it, it's not going to actually contribute to my political career. <laughs> so you should know. I'm going to do it. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm going to take it a, a, the ultimate step further, okay? The politician in the Jewish state is going to talk about my deep and lifelong connection to the Christian tradition. Because I was, as a young person, very, very curious. I was curious about my own traditions. I was curious about Jewish history. And I knew that there was a book out there called the New Testament, which was written by first century Jews, that offered a window into what Jewish life was like at the time of Jesus. But who was going to teach me this book? I belonged to a synagogue. My rabbi wasn't going to teach it to me. My Hebrew school teachers wanted to teach it to me. But there was a church down the street, a Baptist church, uh, run by a very young and dynamic uh, pastor by the name of Rab- <laughs> Pastor Miller, Reverend Miller, a uh, very charismatic man. And one day, literally, I went up to this church. I was very precocious. I knocked on the door, introduced myself, and I said, Reverend Miller, will you teach me the New Testament? And he said, sure. I said, one condition, you can't try to convert me. You know, I'm a nice Jewish boy from down the street. And he said, okay. So for the next year, every week, one day a week, I sat down and I studied the New Testament. And it was one of the most extraordinary experiences I've ever had, uh, certainly educationally, historically, intellectually, but also spiritually. Because what did I find in the New Testament? I found Jews, overwhelmingly Jews, writing about their faith. And when Jesus comes into Jerusalem on that fateful Passover and stands on the Mount of Olives not far from here and says, O Jerusalem, would that I could gather your children like a hen gathers her chickens under his wings. How could you not as a Jew be moved by that? When he says a prayer, which in Hebrew, to someone who speaks Hebrew, is completely Hebrew. Avinu asher b'shamayim, kadosh shimcha. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be the name. It's a Hebrew prayer. It's a Hebrew prayer. And when he said on the cross, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That's Hebrew. I understand that. And it's from the Psalms. So what you get as a young Jewish person reading the New Testament, you understand the roots. And you see things that are deeply, deeply familiar to you. Whether that quote from, also from Matthew and Luke, that is a, a quote from, from the book of Psalms. But far more than that. You learn about the deep and profound connections between our traditions, our legacies, our faith, and our commitment to this land. Another thing you learn about, interestingly enough, 
is numbers. Not the book of numbers, but actual numbers. A number like seven. Seven representing the perfection of God. You learn a number like ten, representing the perfect, perfect laws of God, the Ten Commandments. By the way, the seven comments that Jesus made on the cross, seven, is a crucial number in Judaism and in Christianity, and ten is a crucial number in both of our religions. And the together, those numbers, seven and ten, have a profound, profound meaning for this day. Seventy years of the creation of the state of Israel. It's not 69, it's not 71, it's 70. It's the combination of two perfect numbers that have a meaning. By the way, we don't always know those meanings, but we know that they are important because they appear in our Bibles again and again. We know that on the 7th of June, 1960, thank you, <laughs> that the millennial dream of reuniting this capital city of the Jewish people for 3,000 years would be realized. We recognize that. The seventh, the seventh, the seventh. And it is not insignificant that on this anniversary of the, the reunification of the city of Jerusalem, on the 70th anniversary of the creation of the state of Israel, events which have ramifications that will redound throughout our history and reverberate throughout our traditions, that this has significance and it is significant that on this day we are still fighting the battle. I am going from here to meet directly with the ambassador to Israel from Argentina to talk about the terrible decision yesterday, yesterday of the Argentinian national team to cancel its soccer match in our holy city, in our undivided city. Now, you, you understand, I don't mean to denigrate anybody's religion right now, but there's religion and then there's soccer. <laughs> and you like that. <laughs> it's so true. Um, and you do not, this, this has become a, 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 a deeply disturbing, a traumatic issue for the state of Israel. We'll be addressing it. But the point is, okay, I can have a meeting, I can have a diplomatic meeting, we can try to redress it, but the fact of the matter is, what the decision yesterday showed, and what led to the decision, the threats against the Argentinian soccer players, shows that the battle for Jerusalem continues. It's not ending. It's a matter of fact, we're just at the beginning of this battle. What happened on June 7, 1967, which we know is so significant to us, was not the end of something it was maybe the beginning of the end of something, but that battle for Jerusalem, it continues. And the battle for Jerusalem is the battle for Israel. And in this battle, in this battle, every single one of you is a soldier. You are every bit a soldier than those wonderful Israeli troops who reunited with the ancient Western Wall on at seven o'clock in the morning of June 7th, 1967. You can't make this up. You cannot make this up. Seven o'clock in the morning is when they announced that they were going into the old city. And every one of you is a soldier. And I know many of you are in positions where you can uh, influence public opinion, where you can influence decisions in your country about moving that embassy. This is the battle. Yes, we had an extraordinary event several weeks ago in the inauguration of the American embassy in Jerusalem. But again, that's maybe a, a skirmish, if anything, in this great historic millennial battle. So, in honor of the state of Israel, in our name, in the name of our government, first of all, as fellow soldiers, as fellow troops, as fellow fighters for Jerusalem, I want to thank you. I want to thank you from the bottom of all of our hearts. Bless you. Bless you, bless you. Let us look forward to the day, the year 2027, the 7th of July, of the seventh month. <laughs> June 7th, no, the seventh, June, we'll take 7th of June, 7th of July, 2027, at seven o'clock in the evening, we will all gather together again and declare Jerusalem, the united, the inseparable, the holy capital, universally recognized of the state of Israel. Yom Tov.